my uh, my two files in uh, in logic you can see the top one is what's come out of the desk and the bottom one is what has come out of the room I've already lined them up and, and started tweaking them and I'm just gonna run you through what I've done so um, listening to the first one so that's from the desk so what we're hearing really is the spill of the um, the M's on stage and the drums into the vocal mics and and a lot of the vocals. Now, something I noticed is that if I put in mono, let's turn this off. So this is the gain plugin of Logic. It allows you to change gain balance, just phase invert and so on. But you can just turn a stereo track in mono. And when I turn in mono, there's nothing left. You can hear a tiny bit on the edges. So that told me that told me that the um, recording as it came out of the desk was actually out of phase and if we have a, a little look around at you know something that's got a bit of a form and let's have a look like one of those big peaks here and zoom on it let's take that one and oops and zoom a little bit on it okay I'm gonna have to zoom out uh, yeah right we see, we'll see it here it's not just a it's not a phase shift problem, it's an out of phase problem. So you see that this shape here, there's a peak, yeah, on one side and then there's this kind of like hand on the other, and you see the peak on one side and then this hand on the other. So it's not that the waves are shifted with regards to one another, it's that they're actually out of phase. Basically one of the wires involved in the going from the desk to the recorder was probably wired incorrectly. So in order to fix this before before putting it to mono, I phase invert, and now I've got something that sounds a lot more reasonable. Because I don't particularly care about stereo balance at this stage. I just want to get my vocals in mono in the center of the mix. Now, uh, oh yeah, main thing, main thing that should have really have said when I introduced the zoom recorder is a question about levels. Do not turn on the automated um, level sensitivity on the zoom. It's very helpful if you're doing, you know, if you're recording a meeting or something or whatever. But for recording band practice or recording gigs, it's a big no-no. Um, try and adjust it by hand so you've got enough headroom, and by which I mean, you know, a good 12, 18 decibel of headroom because the thing you don't want is to clip. If you clip, or if you put the auto sensitivity, uh, there's a quiet bit where the crowd, you know, like all in bit before, like you actually start playing, and then so the, the recorder ramps up the sensitivity, and then on the first couple of bars, you've got, you've got clipping. You're over the level, and that's something, the signal, you can't save it. Set the recording to 24 bits by any means, if you're worried about that, so that you, you get enough resolution to afford to have enough headroom, but you'll notice that those are recorded like very, very with a lot of space. We're very, very far from uh, from the peak. So this is what this was the desk, and now the room. If I just remove all of my send and stuff onto the room. So yeah, that's the room as you'd expect. It's got much more ambiance. It seems to be coming from farther away. There's a lot of, of reverb on the drums, which is just the natural ambience of the room. And as a result, you've got, you know, you've got the sound of, you're also going to have like the sound of the crowd at the beginning. Which, which you can hear. It's quite nice to have that on your live recording because this is what makes it live. But um, yeah. So um, we've got those two files. The first thing to do is to line them up. So pay, pick something that's kind of like noticeable on both of those let's say whatever that is that's 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 too small let's pick like a snare yeah the first snare right so that first snare right here let's have a look at it a little bit closer And, and try to line things up as much as you can and also check that they are still in phase um, it's very simple, line it up roughly here at the beginning of the recording and if you've not lined up correctly, if there's a tiny bit of an offset um, it will become noticeable very quickly, you just have to kind of drag it um, 
along. Another thing you can do is to use, um, I prefer to line things up visually so I don't have to fiddle with things, but if you want to do fine adjustments uh, by ear, put in a sample delay, if you've got this or whatever's the equivalent in your DAW of choice, and you'll be able to um, to link the left and right, because you're assuming they are, they, there's no delay between the left and right of your channel, it's the whole thing, and um, start kind of playing up with values until you hear whatever sounds better. You might need to put one on both because this is delaying one track. So if you're, if the, the, the track that I've got here is already late compared to the top one, uh, then you also want a delay on that one and try and see whether delaying the, 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 the top one in that case the desk track will make a difference that you can hear. So that's that's about it in terms of um, in terms of getting the files in, lining them up, and so on. Once you've lined them up, cut off the beginning. Try and make sure they've got a sensible start point. So I think uh, one of our singers had a little bit of an intro, so, so that's yeah, been left in. So I mean, I've got the whole gig there. So I might, you know, I might. So when I'll cut it down to individual individual songs, which I'm probably going to do like master slightly differently as well, to, to depending on their characteristics. Uh, you'll decide what bits to live in and out. Let's listen to this one. So this is what I get. Um, just... Um, ooh. So just mixing the room and the desk. The desk having been put in mono. So start with the room and bring some desk in until your your guitars and vocals are a little bit closer in the mix right so far so good I've done a couple of additional tricks so um, I've got some gain on there to um, because like the effectively this was recorded so low that I'm putting 13 dB in here um, channel EQ so in here I really want to only get the vocals, so let's change my loop points a bit, so it's a bit, that's a bit, that's a bit telephony, so maybe that's a bit extreme. The main problem you're going to have whether you're recording, uh, whether you're doing just a mastering on on a, a single stereo file of a, re of a rehearsal take, or whether you're you 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 we had, you're lucky enough to have several files, is that your guitars and your vocals are going to be in the same frequency range. It's very difficult to be able to adjust the levels separately, which is why I kind of rely on the fact that. Uh, my desk take is going to be mostly vocals and if I've got enough guitar from everywhere else all I need is to just bring those vocals up and I can adjust if not guitars and vocals separately at least vocals against everything else um, so this with compare with the EQ that's there that's actually got a notch in there to kind of get less of the vocals as they're coming from the room <laughs> the room, bring in the desk. So um, another couple of tricks on there is that I'm adding some compression, so be careful with compression because of course the more you compress, um, the more you'll quiet the sound, the particular sound of the room and, and the, the ambience of the room are going to come up. But if we listen to, if we AB compare, keeps it a little bit tighter. I think that could come in slightly, not quite as hard. You notice I'm, I'm compensating at the other side. So when you, when you're AB comparing, try and try and make it equal loudness. So equal perceived loudness, so you can really tell what your compressor is doing. So if I'm changing some settings, I'm also changing either the makeup 
or the uh, the output gain so that in and in and with the compressor in and out it sounds exactly as loud because I'm, I'm not interested in how loud it is or whether it makes it louder or give it some gain i'm interested in how it affects the dynamic characteristics of the sound <laughs> So yeah, arguably we could um, we could come up a little bit in threshold, see how that makes it sound. Now in Lotus, Logic has got this really practical thing where you can um, you can do parallel compression by having your compressor on insert. So it you you, you choose. <laughs> mix percentage between just like purely compressed and 100% original signal which effectively is parallel compression without having to route this to a bus Right, so I need to fiddle with this a little bit more because what I'd like to do is I'd like to have the snare come through from, from the room um, as well. Um, and I have a couple of things I've done that you can you can play around with is that um, I have um, on my bus one here, now this is a This is post fader, but at a um, at zero dB, at a hundred percent, and this goes here. So the idea is that I've taken a copy of what um, of, of of this particular track and routed it to a separate channel where I've EQ'd it uh, drastically, run it to a bit of tube M to give it a bit of grit, so I can just get my bass. Now, on its own, it sounds horrible, but when you bring it into the mix. But to get you, you're able to kind of separate your bass, treat, treat it separately, and bring it into the mix. at something that's kind of that that bring it back into the mix on its own fader uh, with a, with a, a tiny bit more presence because the the, the tube M give it some distortion, which gives it some harmonics. Um, the main thing is obviously your. I'm, I'm using the. Um, I'm I'm running that separate parallel bass bus of my room. Um, thing so if I've decided to amplify something it's going to pick up things like the kick maybe even the low end of the snare some low end of the guitar and so on so you've got to be careful on the EQ um, you could even automate the EQ to move um, or maybe not like automate it but maybe like song burst per song depending on what what key the song is in if you know what the bass line is pick the best um, center frequency to highlight for your bass get a similar trick here which is again sent 100% Post pan, not sure when post pan, let's make it just post fader, because so far we're only worrying about mono, uh, which is the top. So just on its own. Sorry, that, that's, the, that's the top just on its own. It's got a bit of a, it's got a bit of a, just slightly spread across the stereo field. Oh, that 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 does sound like a bit of a flanger, doesn't it? So I probably want less of that. So A B compare. If you can't hear you know, the difference when you take it in and out of the mix, then you're probably doing something wrong, which is what I've done here. Um, I've also tried to make it super wide. So yeah, maybe maybe that was just a little bit ambitious. Um, let's see if I just just take it there and just listen to the sound. 
This could do with probably with a bit of compression as well, because it's make mainly picking up vocal and, uh, and hats as well, or right types of cymbals with the room. There's a lot of kicking, there's a lot of, of boominess in the room, which I'm not particularly digging. Oh, that's just my solo, my solo are not working yet. So solo's working a little bit, a bit, a bit weird in Logic, because, because I've soloed that, it also, like, you know, sends, which means that although this wasn't, the bass wasn't in the solo, it was, uh, we could hear it. So let's start with just the room. Bring in my top. bring a tiny bit of bass. Right, that sounds pretty good. Um, now what I have here is uh, the desk. So with a bit of compression and and an exciter um, which is going to um, effectively generate additional harmonics that are missing from the signal uh, by a process that's very akin to distortion, but in a, a more harmonically pleasant way. Um, this is my this is my voice. It doesn't sound massively loud or massively present, so there's still potentially some work to do on the uh, on the EQ. to try and pick up the voice without, you know... But ultimately, you're only going to balance the voice, um, you know, against... against the room, so... Crank it up that loud on its own. On its own, it sounds terrible. But, but that's just the right amount to make it stand out, stand out drier on on the thing. Um, I also actually did send the voice to my uh, my my top bus. So if we listen to it with that, it's important to kind of balance things all together. Bass, and also just for the sake of it, I've got a tiny bit of reverb here. So um, if I deactivate that, you'll hear it. Right. It's subtle, but we've had the reverb. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna, whether I'm going to keep that because after all there's a lot of room noise on the room take. But if I want my my vocals to stand up a little bit, um, it's nice to just kind of isolate them. So you can use all of that trick, like send a you know pre or post fader. I would actually even maybe use pre if you really want to do everything in parallel. Use pre faders and split your tracks into as many bands as you can isolate. Treat them separately and then group them. Uh, all together in the end, so don't hesitate to, to remove, to try and scoop out the vocals from your room um, take and then use your desk tech that's going to be full of vocals to really isolate the vocals, maybe add an exciter on that and route that to separate reverb to, um, to, to make it stand out uh, a little bit more. Another interesting trick um, that Logic, uh, certainly what well, many of a plugin offers, but like the, the EQ in Logic, uh, you can choose whether to EQ in stereo, as you would, but you can also um, choose to EQ just the middle uh, or only the sides. So that's quite helpful if you want to, um, if you want to, for instance, um, well, if effectively the the middle and the sides is depends on what's in and out of phase. Because if something is in phase on both uh, both sides of the stereo track, it's going to be bang in the middle. If something is slightly out of phase, if it's going to be seeming like it's come from the, from the sides. So one thing you don't want is your bass to be 
um, to be out of phase. So on here, I'm going to take side only and I'm going to put a big low cut filter so that I don't have any out of phase base. And I can add another EQ um, to do to the mid only and maybe give that a little notch there for my bass. Um, go back to my side EQ, if I can find it, and give it a bit of, maybe give it a bit more air, not a ton. I'm mm, not sure if I'm right. I think the mid only boost was probably a, probably a mistake. To be to be honest, so let's mid only say the voice there around here, and we probably don't want anything. Even in the mid, we don't want anything suddenly below say 50. So here, when I turn this on and off here, which is our side only thing, you should definitely hear a difference if you're listening to this on headphones in particular. So yeah, I mean, this is the general concept. I'm still working on that, but those are a couple of, of um, tips and tricks uh, you can use to just do more than stick an EQ and a compressor onto one track, uh, but, but use the best of what you can get out of both the room and the desk, and then use parallel techniques um, to try and to try and effectively not get back to a full, you know, um, studio level multi-track, but still try and separate instruments. Um, so that you can process them differently. Um, so that most people would just kind of stick a multi-band compressor and, and try and try and hope that, that things are work out for the best. It's quite nice to have everything on kind of different faders. Um, and you know, it's, it's, yeah, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. Don't go overboard because al always AV compare. And ultimately, if the thing you're here are hearing out from your super complicated mix uh, on the master, doesn't sound as good as what you're taking off the room, then maybe you're doing something wrong. So always kind of go back to the original recording because it's very easy to overdo it with EQ, if very easy to overdo it with compression. I mean, my settings here are completely out of whack. You would never EQ. 9.5 dBs is ridiculous. Like just the difference of 3 dB is perceived as twice as loud. So that's eight times as loud. So this, you know, be subtle. You have to kind of start drastic so, to, so you can hear the frequencies you're highlighting, but ultimately try and be subtle. Another thing as well that's very important is that this is actually the regular uh, Logic EQ. I think that I'd be better inspired using the linear phase EQ, which actually has all of the same features, uh, but is linear phase. Uh, that means that it's not gonna um, induce uh, phase delays in between its bands, because if you're using uh, um, those EQs to separate your different um, your different instruments and different parts of the spectrum uh, and you're doing that a lot and then you're sending it on a track where it's EQ'd again and it's eq again for each band of the EQ you use you'll induce a slight phase difference and this is going to end up when you sum it all together it's going to end up sounding weird because some of the, the those phase difference means that some frequencies will cancel each other and some frequencies will highlight each other and all of the work you've done will effectively be somehow bizarrely affected um so think think about it this way like you can you know i, I i've got one in in logic I, it's very it's a bit more computationally intensive in fz cues because it also involves a bit of a delay because effectively it has to look ahead the signal so it delays the whole track so you can't use linear phase eq if you're recording um like a, a performance where the performer needs, needs to hear themselves but otherwise um, it's quite good to um, it's quite a good thing. Well, it's quite a good thing to know how EQ works and and when to use a linear phase EQ. Anyway, um, I hope this was instructive to you. Um, let me know what you thought. Let me know if you'd like to hear some more. I'll um, I'll try to be putting maybe the final result on on one of the tracks just to give you a just to give you a, an illustration of how further I went into that process. Uh, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. This is what they say everyone on YouTube. So I feel. I'm compelled to sell it, and uh, well, see you next time.